let's get you in to Columbia University in the city of New York. That's the focus of today's video. Columbia University is a school that in the most recent admission cycle had a regular decision acceptance rate of under 3%. Columbia had an early decision acceptance rate of just over 10%. Both numbers are extremely daunting, but that leads me to tip number one. If you can swing it, and if you are truly committed to going to Columbia University because it's your first choice school, I highly suggest that you apply to Columbia University in the city of New York early decision. You're going to have at least a three times higher chance of getting in, statistically speaking. And if you can get your act together with a strong application by November 1st, you will also know about whether or not you've been accepted by December 15th. So I think it's a win-win. You have a better shot of getting in and you hear sooner so you can make alternate plans if necessary. So that's tip number one in terms of how to get in to Columbia University. But let's today talk in more depth beyond just when to apply. Let's talk about how to make sure that whenever you apply, the application you submit is as strong as possible. Columbia University is an Ivy League school. So that means you should absolutely read my article, How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically, uh, which is linked below this video. Uh, this article was written before the pandemic, so there is focus on standardized testing, even though now all of the Ivy League schools are basically test optional when this video is being cut. But I'll be honest, for most applicants, you should still aim to follow the even testing advice provided in that article about how to get into the Ivy League ethically because most applicants still would benefit from uh, strong SAT or ACT scores when applying to Ivy League institutions like Columbia University. It would be simply lovely to get in without your test scores, but don't assume that you will be one of the special candidates who is able to do so. If you do get in without test scores, more power to you. It happens all the time now, but don't assume you will be in that category and assume you can forget about standardized testing altogether. If you can swing a strong score, you pull off a strong score and you send it to a school like Columbia University. Read the whole, art whole article for more information about how to get into the Ivy League ethically, but that's just the foundation. Beyond that, on the application to Columbia University, which most students will use the common application to make it happen, uh, there is no opportunity on the Columbia supplement like there is at a peer institution like Penn uh, or other very selective institutions that allow you to actually upload a full-fledged resume to the supplement. But never fear, Craig is here to tell you how you can elaborate on your extracurricular activities in greater depth for Columbia University, even though you don't have that resume upload option on the Columbia Supplement. How do you do it? Well, absolutely fill out the entire uh, 10 entry activities page on the common portion of the Common App. But then on the next page of the Common App, the writing page, scroll all the way down below where you're going to copy and paste in your essay, and there is an additional information section. Click on it. Open it up, there are two questions. One question is about the COVID essay. Do you want to answer it or not? Many students, over 80%, will not answer that question. I have a whole video on that uh, and why I think you should answer that question. So watch that after this video. But below that COVID question, which is optional, there's another question that basically says, do you want to share any additional information? And most students will also say no to that. I want you to say yes to that when you're applying to Columbia University, and doing so will open up a new field that gives you 650 additional words to write about anything you want. And that's where I want you to plug in a nice mid-sized resume of 650 words where you're going to be able to elaborate on one or more of the activities that you've already briefly described on the activities page and or describe new activities that simply did not fit on the activities page of the Common App. So that way you at least have two spaces, the activities page and the additional information section of the writing page to share the depth and breadth of what your accomplishments 
uh, have looked like in terms of extracurricular accomplishments during your high school career. To learn about how to format and organize and structure that extracurricular resume for both a Columbia application, but any application where you can and or want to share more details about your extracurricular output, and you should absolutely consider doing so at any and all schools that are highly selected like Columbia, click the link below this video to my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume Short Course. It's less than an hour, but it will supercharge your chances of putting your best foot forward when it comes down to talking, communicating effectively about your extracurricular activities on the actual applications themselves to the colleges and universities you're applying to. Next, I want to dive head first into the supplement for Columbia University. Columbia is a school that prides itself on being intellectually robust. Let's put it that way. That's one very nice way of putting it. Long story short, people who go to Columbia, people who work at Columbia, think highly of themselves intellectually. So that reeks from the supplement that is Columbia Supplement. This is not meant to compliment Columbia or insult Columbia. It's just the fact. They're intellectually high-end is what they see themselves as. And as a result, they want something all their applicants who are accepted have in common to have is the same sort of personal philosophy that they're intellectual, they are into learning deeply uh, about subjects while also learning broadly about subjects vis-a-vis -vis the core curriculum. So with that in mind, that should sort of color how you would approach the entire supplement uh, to Columbia University. In more detail, what am I talking about? Well, number one, uh, on the actual application supplement, there is the question about are there any other test scores that you would like to share? Uh, this is, again, something that the vast majority of applicants now will skip because it is optional, uh, but it is in the academic section of the uh, supplement for Columbia University. Basic question is, you may use the space below to list any additional results or predicted scores from academic examinations you have taken or plan to take. These exams may include International Baccalaureate, A-levels, school leading exams, certificates, AIME, AMC-10, national exams, or other results you would like for us to consider. Many students will not have additional information to share. If that is the case, the space below should be left blank. But again, if you're an IB student, you should put in your predicted scores. Uh, don't miss an opportunity here if you have taken national tests, if you have taken tests and they look good, or you're predicted to do well, for instance, on the IB exam, like you're going to get a predicted score 43, that would be something to report here. Don't just skip it because it is optional. And again, this is another way in which Columbia is assessing you. Even though it's optional, if you have a feather in your cap, you might as well plop it down right there in that question uh, because you want to brag about objective ways in which you're impressive, and a test score is certainly that. Beyond that, in the context, contacts, excuse me, section of the uh, Columbia University uh, supplement, they ask you, have you previously applied to Columbia? And then how have you learned about Columbia University and list an order of influence to you? Uh, they don't necessarily take names of your Columbia contacts, but you can provide up to 10 different ways in which you have learned about Columbia. And I do suggest that you not rush through that part either. You may think, oh, this is innocuous, this is benign, this really doesn't matter, let's get to the meaty stuff like the essays, and we will get to that in a moment. But don't rush through these questions because they want to get a sense of how deep is your knowledge, how much time have you spent doing your due diligence. Remember what I said, Columbia likes students who are researchers, who are intellectual, who think deeply and, and don't make rash decisions intellectually or about academic decisions. This is the massive academic decision of your life, going to a certain college or going to another college. So they want to know that you've taken this seriously and that you haven't just randomly picked Columbia for your ED school because you want to be in New York City or because it's an Ivy League school and you're using them for their, their prestige, et cetera, et cetera. You really want to convey fit. And so here you're doing so at least implicitly by conveying at least three or four contacts, hopefully, that you've had with Columbia previous to applying uh, will give them some degree of comfort that 
you know, this is a well thought out decision on your part. But now let's get to the actual writing supplement portion of the supplement. And this is where the questions start coming fast and furious and from all different angles, but you don't have much space to elaborate on any answer. Uh, the first two are asking you to list things. Uh, the first being list the books or essays, poetry, short stories, or plays you read outside of academic courses that you enjoyed most during your high school career. 75 words for that. And then the next one is, we're interested in learning about some of the ways in which that you explore your interests. Excuse me, I'm talking fast, so I'm stumbling over my words. List some resources and outlets that you enjoy, including but not limited to websites, publications, journals, podcasts, social media accounts, lectures, museums, movies, music, or other content with which you regularly engage. My advice for both of these is be honest, but curate your lists with, again, in mind, this framing that I gave you at the beginning of the video, which is Columbia Admissions considers the university it represents a very intellectual place. Um, and so you want to think from the perspective of sort of the New York intellectual class when you think about what you have in, of, of interest that they may share in their interests. I'm often reminded of the video, it wasn't a video, it was an interview that was on video, but during the 20, 2008 presidential election, Katie Cork, uh, who was a New York-based correspondent for a major news outlet at the time, interviewed Sarah Palin, who was the vice presidential candidate for the Republican Party at the time. And this was a de was deemed by the media, New York and DC-based media, who find themselves to be the arbiters of uh, not only truth, but also the arbiters of, um, you know, taste, if you will, uh, intellectual taste, even though that that is to be debated, of course, and I am not political in this call one whatsoever, but this video, this interview was deemed to be a disaster for Sarah Palin because there was one question during the interview about what news publications she read. Katie Cork asked Sarah Palin this, and I don't even remember the answer, but it was in the headlines for days about how basically how poorly read Sarah Palin was in the eyes of the New York based and DC based media. So with that in mind, you at least have to put some things here. You got to have some track record or make up a track record that you read the news, that you are an aficionado of certain podcasts or certain lectures or go to certain museums in your hometown. They want to get a sense of how your intellectual curiosity plays out because again, they see themselves as very intellectual people at Columbia. They want to accept a diverse class of similarly intellectually curious people, regardless of where these intellectual curiosities take you. You got to think from the perspective of what will impress these admissions officers versus what they may think would be a little more provincial uh, versus let's say cosmopolitan, which would be probably their preference. Um, so I think that you can share a little of the uh, truth with them. I think that's very important, but don't share too much of the truth if you feel like a lot of what you normally peruse in your free time related to books or related to podcasts or websites would be considered a bit lowbrow from the perspective of someone who lives and works on New York's Upper West Side in Manhattan. The next section of the writing supplement reads as follows. A hallmark of the Columbia experience is being able to learn and thrive in an equitable and inclusive community with a wide range of perspectives. Tell us about an aspect of your own perspective, viewpoint, or lived experience that is important to you and describe how it has shaped the way you would learn from and contribute to Columbia's diverse and collaborative community. This is not just an essay about one element of your background or your demographics. This is a short 200 word essay where you have to connect growing up with that perspective or viewpoint or lived experience and then connecting that to how it will inform how you engage and specifically contribute to Columbia's diverse and collaborative community. So you really have to do both. Uh, how you want to structure this is a one sentence introductory sentence with a thesis included. 
followed by a three to six sentence body, maybe seven sentence body, and then a two or three sentence max conclusion where you don't just restate the thesis in new words, but you actually say something new, thought provoking, that hopefully clinches the deal and makes them realize that you would be of real value added to Columbia's um, intellectual life because of the perspective, viewpoint, or lived experience you chose to focus on in this short essay. Moving on to the next essay, which is also 200 words, why are you interested in attending Columbia University? We encourage you to consider the aspects that you find unique and compelling about Columbia. That's key, unique and compelling. This is unique among the why this college essay genre because they don't want you to actually go deep with your academic concentration here because there's another essay for that. So don't necessarily focus on your major here. Instead, you want to focus on everything else that you're attracted to in Columbia, whether it be the core curriculum, whether it be the opportunity to conduct particular research with a professor outside of the classroom that you wouldn't have access to if you were going to study at a different New York university or at a different Ivy League university. You got to get really hyper-focused with specifics that are only applicable to Columbia University. Why are you interested in attending Columbia? Again, structure it with a one-sentence intro with a thesis, a maybe three to eight-sentence body, and then a two or three-sentence conclusion. That conclusion needs to not just restate the thesis, but say something new and thought-provoking that leaves them wanting more. It's extremely important, extremely important, that you get specific. I always say specificity is next to godliness in a short answer question or on an essay on the supplements of any Ivy League college, and that's definitely the case here at Columbia University, get specific. If what you are typing could be applied to any other college or university in the tri-state area, but particularly in Manhattan, you're not getting specific enough. If what you are typing could be applied to one or more of the other Ivy League schools, you are not getting specific enough. You have to do your due diligence. You have to do your research into Columbia, both in person and or online, if you can swing it. Make sure that the college knows you've done that. Make sure Columbia knows you've done that by the time you've done that 200-word response. Then there's one more 200-word essay question, which is basic or looking for a 200-word response, and that is either to Columbia's engineering school or Columbia's college, where they basically ask you to tell Columbia or that school specifically what from your current and past experiences, either academic or personal, attracts you to the specific to specifically to the areas of study that you previously noted in the application. I do this all in one take, by the way, and I have no script. So thank you for dealing with me when I muffle my words. Um, so the way you're going to hit that one up basically is the, as follows. Try your very best to go deep with the academics. Where is it coming from? Where is the motivation coming from? It's not just that daddy wants you to major in econ, it's that you want to major in econ and you can point to one or two things max that you've done in the past that has convinced you that economics is right for you. And then you dovetail that or segue in that into describing how you want to specifically pursue that area of study at Columbia. So this is sort of like another Why Columbia essay from my perspective, because you're definitely going to pay homage to the past and, you know, and the present in terms of why this interest is percolating in your mind and why you were leaning heavily toward majoring or, or focusing academically in this particular area. But you want to also use this 200 word response to specifically underscore ways in which you're going to pursue it and you already dream of pursuing it at Columbia University. So that's a two for there and you have 200 words to do it. And that's why I said don't focus explicitly on your course of study and your courses in the previous Why Columbia essay, because this would be the place where I feel like you could um, flesh that out better, considering we're not just going to restate your history here as much as the essay prompt may convince some applicants to focus all on the past or present. I want you to focus maybe 30% on the past, 10% on the present, and all the rest, that would be 60% on how that's going to play out at Columbia. Paint a picture of you engaging in that academic interest uh, 
at Columbia. I should also say personal as well. Remember they say, please tell us what from your current and past experiences, either academic or personal, attracts you. So if you've just always wanted to be a biologist, um, you can not only talk about classes you've taken or extracurricular clubs you've engaged in, and I don't want you to do too much of that at all, maybe pick one or two, but you can talk about a personal story, like maybe your brother had a medical condition, um, and from a young age you were very aware of biology and how it plays a role and how it this sibling behaved or interacted with you. So you can share personal anecdotes as well, but I do want you ultimately to dovetail or segue that into showing how that's going to play out or you envision that playing out on Columbia University's campus. And then finally, Columbia gives you a 35 word response where you can simply focus on uh, what is a source of joy and happiness for you. This is the one essay I feel like you don't have to uh, be contrived with, <laughs> um, or you at least don't have to curate that much. I mean, obviously make sure there's no grammar or syntax issues, but ultimately uh, the question is, in the last words of this writing supplement, we would like you to reflect on a source of happiness. Help us get to know you further by describing the first thing that comes to mind when you consider what simply brings you joy. Now, yes, you might want to think here about another way in which you can uh, get across your intellectual uh, street cred. Um, but I would also say that this is an unbelievable opportunity to share something new, almost eccentric about yourself that would make you more likable. That is sort of the ultimate goal here is to become more likable and not to become uh, less likable. Let's put it that way. Some students um, become less likable here if they share something that raises more question than answers or has an odd sense of humor. So just be true to who you are, but don't overthink it too much. Uh, think about something that's happy, you know, makes you happy. Like maybe you every, uh, every month meet your grandfather for an ice cream sundae at a particular restaurant and it's like the highlight of your month. Share something uh, that underscores a value you share. So in that, in that case, you uh, value you share is family values. Um, but most people reading this application will share that value as well. So you'll become more likable as a result of being relatable to the admissions officer. So think like that. Finally, there are additional slots on the supplement where you can share even more, in this case about research. Again, most students will click no to the question about have you completed research with a faculty member or mentor in an academic discipline such as science, engineering, or other academic interest. Um, you know, if you're applying to the School of Engineering, um, etc. The fact of the matter is, uh, if you have done the research, don't skip this. You should absolutely answer in the affirmative, and then they're going to ask you some additional questions about who that mentor was, how to contact that person. This is an intellectually heavy-hitting school, uh, so you definitely want to use every opportunity to your advantage. Don't make something up. Obviously, if you haven't done research, you can't answer it. Uh, but if you have done it, don't think, well, it was such a small thing, it's not a big deal. Instead, really double down and own it and explain, create that abstract, explain what you've done, uh, and, and sell it. Sell it. You've got to work it here. Come on. Uh, when you're applying to a school like Columbia University, you have to be in it to win it. I always tell my one-on-one -on -one clients, go big or go home, and my students by and large do go big, therefore they don't go home because they crush their college applications because we work hand in hand together to make sure that every blank space on every application, on every supplement, uh, can be absolutely knocked out of the park. And I want you to take that approach as well when you are completing not just the supplement to Columbia, but any highly selective school or university. If you like this video, my name is Craig Meister. You can learn more about my one-on-one -on -one college admissions coaching services at collegemeister.com. I hope you at least like the video below uh, by checking that little thumbs up thing, right? That little symbol. Uh, also, you can subscribe to my channel because I do some of these videos whenever I have free time. Um, and so maybe a school that is on your list will be coming down the pike shortly and you'll want to learn how to get into that school. But again, for today, I hope you get into Columbia University. I hope some of these tips will help you do just that. I wish you all the best and keep watching. Good luck.